Welcome to another one of our lectures in our lecture series on design of structural steel connections. In our last class, we looked at an Excel sheet which was prepared for the calculation of bolt capacity and from today onwards we are starting with another connector which is a weld. So today we will be discussing about some weld parameters and our discussion will be mainly based on our code IS800 and next lecture we will look at the calculation or we will continue this calculation of weld parameters and then we will start with the design of connections. So first what is weld? Weld as we all of us know it is a process in which two or more metals are joined together by heating those me metals or by heating those materials and generally what happens is we deposit another third material here to join these two metals and that third material is generally known as filler material. So by providing heat to these metals and that heat also causes melting of some part of these two base metals. By providing heat or by providing electricity we deposit some filler material so that the filler material helps to bind these two metals. So different processes of welding are available different techniques are adopted so different welding techniques we can say for example if we have two plates which are to be joined back to back here by using some material this is generally known as butt welding so this is one technique of welding another and the most commonly used type of welding and the most commonly discussed welding in our this course also it is the fillet welding and in fillet welding, these two metals, also known as base metals, these metals are kept at some angle to each other. For example, for now we have these two metals attached at 90 degree. So the welding type adopted for joining these two metals is known as fillet welding. For example, we can weld one side or both sides of these metals and this is known as fillet welding. Another can be plug welding, for example, if we have a plate here, then we can make a hole on this plate and then we can weld this hole here. If you look at the side view, for example, there is a plate at the bottom and there is a plate at the top which is to be joined with this plate at the bottom. Then we can make a hole here and do welding here which is known as plug welding. So these are the different techniques of welding but our main discussion will be focused on this fillet weld. So now after knowing these techniques of welding let us go to some codal provisions and weld and welding. The welding is discussed in this chapter here. The, the connection design is discussed in chapter 10 of IS 800. And in that chapter 8, from 10.5.1 or 10.5, I guess, the provisions relating to weld and welding are provided. So we will look at some of the provisions is listed out in the code. The first provision is related to end returns. So what it says is that fillet weld terminating at the ends or sides of parts should be returned continuously around the corners for a distance of not less than twice the size of the weld unless it is impractical to do so. So what does this mean before discussing this section here let us see what is the size of weld. So three or four different parameters of weld need to be discussed and need to be known for performing the calculations. For example one may be the size of the weld, another is the length of the weld, The third is the throat thickness and the fourth is the permissible weld stresses. So in today's class we will discuss these three provisions first size, length and throat thickness. So about this permissible weld stress we will discuss in our next class. Okay, let us first say 
we are joining one rectangular metal plate with another rectangular metal plate and we are joining it with the help of a fillet wheel so this is the fillet wheel that we are using to join these two metals so what is the size of the weld the size of the weld or the leg of the weld you can also call it a leg is the this distance here for example this is the size or the leg of the weld and also on the other side the distance of this weld it is size or leg of the weld in one of these quarter provisions as we will see later what it says is that the minimum of these two sizes or these two legs should be taken as the size of the weld for example if this fillet weld has size equal to 5 mm on this side and size equal to 6 mm on this side then the minimum of these two values should be adopted as the size of the weld that is the size of the weld now will be 5 mm so what this section in 10.5.1.1 in return says is that if you look at the diagram on the right hand side you can see that this plate let's say plate number one and this plate let's say plate number two plate number one is being joined with plate number two with the help of a fillet weld and for example if we have welded from here to here if we have welded this part here and if we have welded this part here what the code says is that we must not stop our weld at this point either this or this instead the weld should be made continuously around the corner so if i draw a diagram for this for example this is the plate and the another plate to be joined is this plate let's say that we have welded this length here and this length here so the weld at this corner and this corner should not stop here instead it should go around the corner and what is the distance that the weld should go that distance is known as n return so this is n return and also this distance is n return so what it says is that this n return should be at least equal to the twice the size of the weld twice the size of the weld so if the weld size is 5 mm for example then this end return should be at least equal to 10 millimeters so this is about end return in the next section about lap joint what the code says is in the case of lap joint the minimum lap should not be less than four times the thickness of the thinner part or 40 mm whichever is more that means let's say that two plates are being joined by constructing a lap joint here in this way let us say that the thickness of this upper plate is 12 mm and the thickness of this lower plate is 16 mm and we are constructing fillet well at the edges in this way to join this lap joint so what the code says is that the minimum lap now what is the distance that is lapping here from here to here the plates are being lapped to construct a lap joint so this distance should not be less than four times the thickness of the thinner part so the thickness of the thinner part here is 12 mm this is the thinner thickness of the plate so four times 12 mm means 48 mm or 40 mm whichever is more or 40 mm you can see here that the greater value is 48 mm of these two values so this lap length or the lap distance should not be less than 48 mm in this case so single end fillet should should be used only when lap parts are restrained from opening and another important clause is this here when end of an element is connected only by parallel longitudinal fillet welds that means you can say this is the case here again let's see this is one plate and this is another plate at the top 
that is being joined to this second plate at the bottom so these two plates are let us say connected only by parallel longitudinal fillet wells that means let us say that one fillet weld is on this side and parallel to it another fillet weld is on this other side so now these two plates are being joined only by parallel longitudinal fillet welds then the length of the weld along either is should not be less than the transverse spacing between the longitudinal waves so what it says is that if this is spacing between these two longitudinal parallel fillet weld is b let us say that this spacing is b if this spacing is b then the length of this fillet weld should be greater than or equal to b <coughs> sorry the length of this fillet weld now should be at least equal to b or more than b the length of this fillet weld cannot be less than b so this is what this lap joint is about we discussed two major criteria here one is the length of the lap and another is the length of this weld here so another clause let's see here what 10.5.1.3 says is a single fillet weld should not be subjected to movement about the longitudinal axis of the weld that means let us say that let me draw a diagram here okay let us say that this is a plate that we have and this plate is fixed onto another vertical metal plate here with the help of fillet weld let us say that the fillet weld is being applied here and at the bottom side which we cannot see from the top so what happens is we should make sure that this fillet weld is not subjected to moment about the longitudinal axis of the weld that means now if this is our weld here this becomes the longitudinal axis of our fillet weld and we should make sure that about this longitudinal axis there are no any moment like this let me draw it with another color we should make sure that there are no moments acting about the longitudinal axis of this fillet weld why is it so because along this axis the fillet weld is weaker so it may not be able to resist these type of moments so we should make sure that the fillet weld is not being subjected to any moment about its longitudinal axis and after this finally in another clause 10.5.2 which we discussed at first the code talks about the size of the weld so you can see a diagram here at the bottom also the two plates are being joined by one convex fillet weld convex means the shape is convex here if it was a concave fillet weld then the shape of the fillet weld will be somewhat like this so in this convex fillet weld uh, different parts are being shown here for example this one is the weld face this upper part is the weld face two is the weld two we have two here three is the leg as we discussed previously this and this are both the legs and similarly uh, about throat thickness effective throat convexity is shown here so what is the throat thickness before going into size of weld let us see also what is the throat thickness so if these two plates are being joined together by a fillet weld let us say that this fillet weld is joining these two plates then the distance from this point to this point this minimum distance is taken as the throat thickness throat thickness so let me draw separately here if this is our fillet weld here then this minimum distance is taken as the throat thickness so this is the throat thickness and we have the size by calculating these distances so what does the code say about the size of weld the size of normal fillet shall be taken as the minimum weld leg size same as we discussed at the very beginning if the leg size is s1 here and if the leg size is s2 here then the size of the weld is minimum of s1 and s2 
minimum of S1 and S2. For deep penetration well, where the depth of penetration beyond the root run is a minimum of 2.4 mm, the size of the fillet shall be taken as minimum leg size plus 2.4 mm. That means if we are joining these two plates here, if we are joining these two plates here, and our fillet well is not only bounded by the legs of the two sides of the legs of the two plates but instead our fillet well is made beyond the root run in this way and if this penetration is greater than a depth of 2.4 mm then the size of the well is taken as the minimum leg size plus 2.4 mm so this is about the size of the well So let's go to another clause now. You can see clause 10.5.2.3. The size of the fillet weld should not be less than 3 mm. So minimum size of fillet weld is 3 mm. The minimum size of the first run or of a single run fillet weld shall be taken is given in table 21 to avoid the risk of cracking in the absence of preheating. So this run what does it means a single run or double run so whenever we are joining these two plates for example a single run may not be sufficient so what we do is we can make one run of fillet well and again add another run of fillet well over the top and again end again add another run of fillet well over the top in this way we can increase the size of the fillet well by making different runs over this junction here so what should be the minimum size of this weld? If we see at table 21, if the thickness of the thicker part to be joined is up to 10 mm, the minimum size is 3 mm. If the thickness of thicker part is between 10 to 20 mm, the size minimum size should be 5 mm. Similarly, between 20 and 32 mm, 6 mm. And if the size of the thicker part is between 32 and 50 mm, the minimum size should be 8 of the first run and 10 for minimum size of weld. That means for this fourth case, if you are joining these two plates here and this fulfills this fourth case criteria where the thickness of thinner part is between 32 and 50 mm. The first run should have a minimum size of 8 mm. So this should be have a minimum of 8 mm size. but the size of the fillet well as a whole should not be less than 10 mm. That means after this we have to at least add another run or another layer of fillet well such that the minimum size becomes 10 mm. So this is 8 of the first run means in, in cases where we cannot provide the whole 10 mm thickness in a single run then what we have to do is the first run should be made at least equal to 8 mm and the second run should be such that at least a minimum total size of 10 mm should be maintained so this is about the size of the weld and one important part which we use many times while making calculations for weld is this value of k so what is this value of k here let's see the code for the purpose of stress calculation in fillet weld joining faces inclined to each other so we may have different inclinations so whenever we are constructing fillet weld to connect these two plates which have different inclination to each other the effective throat thickness shall be taken as k times the fillet size where k is a constant depending upon the angle between fusion faces so that means this effective throat thickness in these cases should be taken k times the size of weld so we already know how to calculate or find the size of weld. We have to determine the value of this k from table 22. So based on different inclination angles, 60 to 90 degree, 91 to 100 degree, 101 to 106, we have different values of k here. So this 60 to 90 degree is the most common inclination angle. And generally we will be using this 0 0.70 k value. So that means if our size weld is 5 mm, then the effective throat thickness in this case will be 0 0.7 into 5 that means 3.5 mm
so this is about some of the codal provisions that is given in our code regarding the calculation of different weld parameters so what we did today we looked at the size of weld we looked at about the throat thickness and one final thing is the length of weld so we have not discussed it separately but you must have already understood by now for example if we are joining two plates in this way and we are constructing weld on the two sides like this then the length of the weld is this length and this is also the length of the weld so we will be making use of these three values size through thickness and length of weld when we are calculating the permissible weld stresses so this permissible weld stresses will be the topic of discussion for our next lecture I would like to end today's lecture here. In next lecture, we will look at this permissible weld stresses. We will discuss about what are F and Q stresses in weld and how to calculate the equivalent stress. And then we will go to the calculation of weld stresses for different cases. We will look at some numerical examples. So this is the end of today's lecture. Keep watching our YouTube channel. Thank you.